Well, appreciate you guys uh, coming out here at 4.30. I, usually we do this earlier, um, but we have bowl practice and a lot of stuff going on in the building right now. And our guys are in final exams, and it's, a, it's an exciting time. And this recruiting class certainly makes it even more exciting. So um, before we get into your questions, I just some thank yous. I want to thank uh, Eric Josephs, who is our director of player personnel. Um, Cassie Petty, who is our director of uh, on-campus recruiting and uh, recruiting operations. And the rest of the whole recruiting team did an incredible job in uh, this really is a multi-year effort. You know, some of these kids we've been recruiting for four years, and that's really the way it works here. And uh, the people that run our recruiting operations and our staff, led by Eric Josephs, is, uh, they do such a good job. And uh, my hat's off to our coaching staff. They did an incredible job developing relationships, identifying the right people, uh, and then following through with the recruitment. And uh, certainly in this day and age, there's a lot of attacks. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in, in the recruitment and to see it to the finish line the way they did. Uh, really pleased we have 28 members of this class and uh, I think it's well-rounded. I think it brings a lot of different attributes that we're going to add to our football team that are going to make us better in the future. And uh, it's the highest academic class in, in my in my career, all the years that I've been the head coach, which I'm really proud of that too. Uh, as I've said to you guys so many times, it's a very challenging academic institution, um, and they compete with some really tremendous students in the classroom. Forget who they compete with on the field, and um, you know this group will be able to come in and do just that, compete in the classroom as well as on the practice field and in the game field. So I'm excited about them, um, and again, just a great big thank you to our staff, our entire staff, um, recruiting and recruiting weekends and during the week, coaches away from their families, it's a great sacrifice, but it's the critical part, the life lifeline of any college football program. And uh, I'm grateful for the job that our staff from top to bottom they did in recruiting. So with that, I'll open it up to questions um, and try to help you any way I can. Dimir Miller obviously accomplished a lot at Monmouth um, and set several records. So what, what did you see with him on film that made that stood out and kind of made him the right fit for, for your program? Yeah, there was some connections with Dimir, um, certainly being local. But, I mean, he's the all-time leading receiver in FCS this past season. Uh, he happened to be childhood friends with Aaron Young. They played, uh, I don't know if it was Little League or what it was together, football. Uh, but uh, my hat's off to Aaron. I mean, he, he helped us in the recruitment, and um, I think we have a receiver there that can help us. He's very fast. I think this class overall brings a lot of speed to our team, and that's something you know is very important to me and the philosophy with which I coach and what I expect our program to play. So, But he fits right in there, and, and you know he's a one-year guy, so we expect him to come in here and have an immediate uh, contribution and impact on our team. AJ Sarace, what did you like about him as a prospect and just kind of what does he bring to this class? Yeah, AJ is uh, he's a tremendous football player. It's in his blood. You know, his dad is a longtime head coach at Princeton and in the National Football League before that, and uh, just a great family. Um, family of educators. His grandpa was a legendary coach down in South Jersey. So uh, you guys know the story, and AJ is every bit the, the culmination of all that. He's a football guy. He's a great student, um, and I think is going to be a great quarterback at Rutgers. Coach, you had your uh, first commitment uh, in your tenure as uh, head coach uh, from Georgia and Antonio White. Just how big is it to bring him into the program and just to sort of extend, ex expand the footprint into the state of Georgia? Yeah, Antonio is, a, is an excellent football player. He's got all the skills to be a, a, another, you know, in a long line of great defensive backs that played at Rutgers. Um, and you're right, our reach has kind of grown in recruiting. And I think that has a lot to do with, you know, the Big Ten is a national brand. And it's never become more national than it is now from coast to coast, right, starting next year. And Rutgers is a national brand. And I think we have the ability now to do a little more in an expanded footprint than maybe we did our first go around. So we're taking advantage of that. And we're so, I have grown so focused and can see so clearly what we want in a player, both from a physical standpoint, 
from a cultural standpoint and then again from an academic standpoint. And I'm really hard on our coaches and our recruiting staff and, you know, don't settle just because he's got two of the three or one of the three. It needs to be three of the three. And um, sometimes you got to stretch your boundaries a little bit. Now, sometimes in the past, we had to settle for two of the three or one of the three because that's what we could get. Uh, I would tell you in this class, uh, most of these guys, if not all of them, are three for threes. And that's, uh, that's what we need here. And again, I don't get caught up in rankings. I don't, I don't care about any of that stuff. I care about finding the right guys for our program that are an athletic fit. They're that good a player. They're a cultural fit. They can live in our program and, and succeed in our program. And they're an academic fit that they can succeed here at Rutgers in the classroom. And that, that's what's important to me. We've got to find people that fit our program. Greg, a two-part question. One, um, these kids have been uh, committed a while. So in today's era of guys going all over the place and looking at the schools and decommitting, what is it about this class that, that kept them together? And two, the young wide receivers, you talk about them and, and having the number one player in the state of New York. Yeah, those are two good questions. First one is keeping the class together. You're right, Fooch. We had one decommitment in the entire class. It happened early on. We've been able to recruit this class. Like I said, it's a culmination of many years of recruitment. And that's ha hats off to our staff, our coaching staff that actually was on the road recruiting them and on the phones with them, and our recruiting staff that did all the backward work, background work uh, and the legwork uh, on all the things that we do. I'm really proud of the way that our guys go out and build relationships, not only with the prospect, with his family, with his coach. I believe, I know, uh, old school, I believe the high school coach is still very, very important in recruiting. There's a lot of young coaches out there right now that don't even talk to the high school coach. They just go right to the player and their family. And they, they, that's, that's one way to do it. It's just not the way I, I do it. It's not the way we do it at Rutgers. Um, there's people involved in this, in this, uh, in this process, certainly the, the prospect, but then his family and his head coach. Those are uh, very, very important people to me. And our guys do a great job of touching all those touch points and making sure that the communication is consistent. Uh, and we're very clear what we're looking for. So there's no secret. We're very honest. Uh, people sometimes get frustrated. Well, why haven't you offered my kid? And I always just say, look, we're going to have to agree to disagree. But I always think if you go to the coach and you say, if someone came in here and told you who you have to start at quarterback, what would you say? You throw them out of the office, right? This, you, you, you work at this. Well, that's kind of where we're at in our program. We know exactly what we're looking for. And we have to agree to disagree sometimes if we're not going to give. I don't make scholarship offers to kids if they're not acceptable, if they're not committable offers. That's one thing I don't like about college football right now. Teams are offering four or 500 kids. Well, how could they be committable, right? It's literally just more of an invitation to come to summer camp. You know, we make committable offers and, and uh, this group we made them to and some of them took them and then we really stuck, stuck with our guys and uh, that's why I know they, they know who we are. I don't want guys that think they're coming to one thing and all of a sudden they show up and it's something totally different. We're transparent with it. We had some visitors that come, you know, with bowl practice. I really like it. We have some visitors come and I can tell you for, you know, I think there was some guys that came and saw the way we practiced. It's a little, a little harder than they want to practice. So they went somewhere else and that's fine. Better now than later, right? You don't, you know, this is the way we practice. And we don't put on a recruiting practice so people can see, you know, high fives and chest bumps. This is how we practice. And if you want to do it this way, you'll get better. You'll end up in the NFL if you're talented enough and you'll get your degree. Those are pretty good things. But this is the way we do it here. That's how we have to do it. Second part of your question, the receivers. Really good receiver class. And you hit it on the head. K.J. Duff, you know, number one player in the state of New York. What is number one, number two? I don't know what that means. I know K.J. Duff understands what it is to be a Rutgers player. Right? His teammate Ian Strong the year before came here, and he had an inside, inside view of who we are through his teammate. And uh, he came. So number one, that tells me Ian Strong's doing well. And number two, it tells me K.J. Duff knows exactly what he's getting into. And those two will be fun to watch in the years ahead together. Uh, you look at Ben Black, another guy who can fly. Isaiah Crumpler, I don't want to leave anybody out, but we really do have a, 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 a good group coming in that can, that, can, that can run, that can catch, that can do all those things. Um, so we, we need more numbers at the position, and I think we're getting it, so that's good.
Does that answer your question, Fooch? Yeah. Two parters are hard, you know. I, I forget sometimes. Thank you. Oh, well, unfortunately, I have a two parter for you. All right, Richard. Um, <laughs> Farrell Nagu, is that, if I pronounced that correctly? Don't make me blow up. Oh, jeez. Come on. Uh, Farrell Nagu, did I, did I pronounce that one correctly? Yeah, you did. Nagu. Right uh, on the nose. Hey, yep. there, there we go. Um, he's uh, one of the most recent offers, um, just recently flipped today. Um, can you talk about when you guys first evaluated him and when you kind of found him and all that? And then the second part, how easy of a, of a sell was it to him, being that half the defensive line room is basically Canadian at this point? Good question. Uh, yeah, we evaluated Farrell in uh, summer camp. He came down here and came to our summer camp. And at the time, I really liked him and, and our coaches really liked him, but we weren't sure he was exactly a fit. So what we did is we were very honest with him. We told him, we want to see your senior tape. When your season's over, we'll evaluate it. We did. We really liked his senior tape. Uh, Coach Corey Heatherman went up to Montreal and uh, met and saw him and, and uh, came back to me and said, Coach, this is a sure thing. We got to go. So we went as hard as we could. And uh, we were fortunate to be able to, you know, we weren't the only ones who got to his senior tape and decided that, that he, you know, I, he did flip his commitment, but there was other people that we were battling uh, as much or more than the, the school he was committed to. So I was very excited for that to happen. I think he's a, another fine young man, and you're right. When you look at it, we have seven guys from Canada now. We will, when they enroll, seven guys from Canada on our team, and they all, ha all seven happen to be on defense. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a place we've always recruited. I personally recruited it as a young assistant coach at another school where, I, and, and you know, I got to know that you have to make sure you have the right connections. Like anything in recruiting, you got to get real information. And as long as you can get real information, then you can make good decisions. And I think when you have a group of people that you're connected to up there that can get you accurate information, it gives you a chance in an area that's maybe not as heavily recruited or there's not as much of a spotlight on every guy to get the good information. And so right now, I really, the guys that have come here from Canada have been very successful. And they're all arrow up guys. So this, this is exciting for me. I think we have, what, three players coming from Canada on this recruiting class alone. Yeah, I got to spend some time with Taj Sanders this morning at his signing day ceremony. He seemed like a great kid, great family, all the things you're talking about. Um, what stood out about him and his evalu and your evaluation of him and do you think it was a, a little bit of a, a recruiting win to pull a kind of a top end player out of the Catholic school league up there in North Jersey? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a win pulling Kaj Sanders. I'll tell you that. I mean, he's a great player. He's a guy that we've been recruiting for a long time. I think he is uh, going to be a special player here. And uh, the fact that he comes from a quality program up in North Jersey, Bergen Catholic, uh, Vito Campanelli does a great job with the entire program. And, Certainly, uh, we get a guy that, you know, our plans are to play him in the secondary. But, I mean, you watch him play as a running back this year. He was electric as a running back. So it tells you kind of the athlete that he is. Uh, now, he played in the secondary for them. But, I mean, this is the kind of athlete you're talking about. And I think uh, Ray's the right way. Really a tough football player. Loves football. And, again, I keep coming back to the guys that fit us. This is not a good place if you don't love football. If you're a like it guy, you probably should go somewhere else. And that's just being honest. And I tell players that right, right off the bat. Uh, this is a love it guy. You know, I look at our secondary, I'm excited, really excited about the, the guys we have coming to play in the defensive secondary. Kevin Levy from Florida is going to be, a, I think, a fantastic player. You know, I, I, I go down the list. I really, you know, I, I always leave somebody out if I start singling people out. But it's one player after another that I just think are really talented guys. And... Uh, are our type of people. So I'm very excited to get them here and get started coaching them. Uh, and that's the fun part of it, right? This is all going on while we're getting ready for a bowl game. So there's so many good things going on right now. It's taken a while to get the cooker going, uh, but I think it's going. And I've talked to you guys about that pipeline theory. This group will fill the pipeline and uh, will fill it as well or better than I thought it would. So that's exciting to me. Gabe Winowich, um, what stood out to you about him on, on when you were recruiting him and then the fact that he transferred into to play here in New Jersey so he could be an early enrollee and, and play with AJ, I guess, what does that say to you about him and, and kind of how much that means for him to be here? Yeah, Gabe is a, Gabe's a throwback football player. He is a tough guy. 
he can play. He played any number of positions this year on defense, on offense. Um, I think Gabe is going to help us in a lot of ways. And the fact that he did just what you said, he transferred to New Jersey with one purpose, so he can enroll early. His school, unfortunately, he couldn't do it. So I understand schools that have that policy. There's no, no hard feelings. I hope they don't have any. You know, it was his doing. It wasn't ours. We didn't perpetuate that. But when he told us what he wanted to do and he went through with it, I said, wow, this guy is really serious about getting his college career going. So it's going to be great to have him here. You know, you see him here on game days. He's here for most games, he and A.J. Um, you know, that, that's what I love. You know, I'd see him before every game, see him after every game, with the home games. They feel like family already. This whole class feels like they're part of us because we've been re recruiting them for a long time. Uh, there's very few. You know, there's a couple, you know, like you talked about Pharrell. We had had him at camp, but he didn't commit till yesterday. That's a, that's a new addition. But a lot of these guys have been committed for over a year. So it's, uh, it's exciting. How much of a role was uh, Marquise Watson able to play in, in this recruiting class, putting it together? And can you just share any update on him? Can he coach in the bowl game? And just what's his status right now? Yeah, Keith's played a big part in a lot of these kids. Yeah, he's a, he's a tremendous recruiter. Um, I'm going to stick, stay away from really getting into his personal condition and all those things. He won't be able to coach in the bowl game, no. Um, but um, again, making progress and just let's all keep him in our prayers. He's definitely one of us, and he definitely had a big impact on this recruiting class. Brady, a former hard nosed linebacker, did you find a few in this class? Well, yes, we did, Fooch. And uh, I appreciate the compliment. I don't know, some would argue maybe not the toughest, but uh, I appreciate the compliment. Um, you know, you go down and you look at our linebacker class. You know, the one guy that, um, well, there's several actually, but Sam uh, Piloff from Wisconsin is a guy that I, you know, I just fell in love with watching him play. Um, I thought that he, he epitomizes how we like to play. He's a run and hit guy, he's reckless. You know, we say swarm, he swarms all over the field. Um, it really, you know, I'm just looking down here to make sure I don't forget anybody. You know, MJ Johnson, unfortunately had a torn ACL early in the year. So he missed his senior season, but boy, was he a good player on tape. He's been rehabbing and working, and he's going to be starting here. So excited, you know, excited there. Um, you know, talking about linebackers now solely, so I'll keep looking here. Um, Sam Robinson, oh, my goodness, from Tallahassee. Just a run and hit guy as well. I can't wait till JB gets his hand on him. He's going to be, you know, just tremendous as he gets bigger and stronger. Uh, it really is a great a great group of guys at every position group. I think we kind of made ourselves better at some. We made ourselves much better. So um, excited to coach these guys for sure. Final question. Right, during your first tenure here, it seems like you were pretty good at finding those unknown kids and uh, getting them signed and committed and turning in and develop them, developing, yeah, developing them into pretty good players. Uh, do you think that's possible in today's day and age of recruiting with social media being the way it is and everything? Uh, it's a good question. I mean, even with social media and all those things, why are there players that are selected from FCS and Division Two, and even Division Three once in a while into the National Football League draft, right? So certainly recruiting is uh, as much an art as it is a science. I think what we do, and I do a good job, led by, again, Eric Josephs, is we use the science part of recruiting, all the measurables, and we plug that all in, and we do a lot of evaluation and and um, you know analytics on that but then the relationship part is equally as important right so sometimes you find a guy that maybe isn't a five star or even a four star or a three star but you know he's got something special about him and as long as he loves football and has the growth potential and then you know what it's just as good to take one that's got all the stars and all the notoriety as long as he is one of us and i don't get caught up in stars i don't get caught up in it what i get caught up in is is he one of us and the players know what I mean when I say that. You know, they'll come on visits and I'll tell our guys, all right, what'd you think? And they'll blah, blah, blah. And I'll say, is he one of us? And if there's any hesitation, then I really worry. I go in and start digging deep. But is he one of us? Yeah, coach, he's one of us. Okay. And then Because they, they know what we are. Finally now, I think our culture is embedded in our program. And there's no one better to evaluate if they're part of that culture, if they weren't being part of that culture, than our players. So that's why it's so important to get around our current players so they can let me know and let our staff know if they're a good fit. 
We'll do the evaluation. I don't ask our players to evaluate tape or look at, go to games and look at players. We do that. But, you know, the part that we need help on sometimes is, okay, when they're not around their parents, when they're not around their coaches, when they're not around us, who are they? And uh, it's great when they visit, they hang around our guys, and we get a real insight into who they are. And that's another reason with this group, you know, when they're the highest academic class we've ever recruited here in 15 years, and this will be 16 years. Okay, they are a group that I really think could be special. I have no idea where we rank. I have no, do I care? I know what they are, and I'm very excited. There's a lot of hard work that went into this class, and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't one more time thank our staff. I think recruiting in college football has become such, such a challenge for assistant coaches, and their families sacrifice so much because they're on the road constantly. You get a bye week in the season, everybody thinks, oh, you get to go spend time with your family. These coaches are on the road recruiting. You, know, you end the season right, right on Thanksgiving weekend, they're on the road in five days, they're out on the road all the way to bowl preparation. Then they go to a bowl game, right? They'll get a, a week off and then they're back at it. We have a, a, a visit weekend in the first week of January for portal guys. And I'm not complaining, but I, I do mention it because these guys pay a, a huge price for us to have the kind of players that are on this sheet here and that, that people are reading about and seeing. So I thank our staff and everybody that's made it possible. I also thank you guys for covering it. Um, I think you're going to enjoy this group in the next four or five years. Enjoy covering them. Enjoy working with them because they're, they're really special people. Thanks, guys.